guys, Jazzy Spots here. I told you guys I was coming back from the book, and here I am. So, Faith Hunter writes the Jane Yellow Rock series. I don't know if I've told you about them about her before, but she is a skinwalker that hunt, that hunts vampires in Louisiana. Um, 14 books later, she does a lot more than that, and we find out a lot of secrets, and she gathers kind of a menagerie of people and creatures and um, uh, groups around her. And so the last book, Final Air, is going to be coming out in September. And the author, um, the fans kept saying that they wanted all of the novellas, the anthologies, and all of the stuff in one spot. And so that's what this is of Claws and Fangs. Um, I have not read very many of her novellas or anthologies. I did read Dirty Deeds, which came out last year, and two of the stories from in there were in here, so I didn't read over those again. Um, and Dirty Deeds 2 is coming out uh, this summer, which I'm kind of excited for. I usually don't like no novellas and anthologies because it's like, just get me back to the <laughs> main storyline. I know that they usually have good information, but it's just I want the you know full story instead of getting really hype into something and then it's over in 80 pages. But... Um, so most of these I hadn't seen. I'll give you guys a quick um, rundown. There's a couple of different stories. One, the first one was Candy from a Vampire, and this was before Leo met Jane. So Leo's the master vampire of New Orleans, and he's that quintessential, you love him, you respect him, but you hate him, and they make those bad decisions. Um, but anyway, this one is where he's handing out candy for Halloween to give the vampires good press because, you know, in here, people know vampires exist. Um, and that one was just quick and fun. The next one was Make It Snappy. And this is, again, another um, point of view of Leo before he met Jane. And it's so interesting to see because coming in from, you know, reading up to the 13th book and forgetting bits and pieces here and seeing the perspective that they had at the time before they met and those big changes occurred because, you know, character development. Um, it was great to kind of see how some of those thought processes have changed for all of the characters that are shown and even some of, um, like you see Bruiser, who's one of the big parts of characters in the story, kind of pre-Jane and you think about how he is now to where he was and you're just like, oh my god, what a change, right? Um, <laughs> and so... Uh, that one was fun, and you even got to see some of Derek, which, you know, we miss Derek a little bit. This one's uh, It's Just a Date, and again, this is when Jane is really start starting to intermingle with the vampires. And um, it's a double date with Rassler, which, you know, he's the awesome security guy that we know and love. And um, a double date, some witchy stuff, and handling business which uh, was fun. Let's see the next one. Uh, Life's a bitch, then you die. Censor! Um, <laughs> this is Beast's point of view, and it's, um, and it's where she wants to hunt in Ed's car. And so it does say it takes place before of Cats and Cars, which is in here, and that's the best story ever. Um, love Beast's point of view. You know, Beast is supposed to be simple. She's the uh the puma inside of jane they share a spirit which is kind of what makes her skinwalker um but beast has her own personality she's a big cat so you know she knows best and she likes kits and um she can't count she can count to five so some stuff is much more than five and in one of the books she told somebody loved them more than five it's so awesome beast has her own facebook page that i do follow <laughs> and you get to hear the stories about you know beast hunting and um the writer throws herself in there that beast is like hanging out with the writer on top of her rv um but anything with beast's point of view is fun it's when jane was sick and um seeing how the youngers are able eli and um alex are able to communicate with Jane when she's in beast form and knowing kind of who's in the reins, which is really cool because they could tell from like one moment it's Beast and one moment it's Jane, um, just because, you know, Beast is a big cat. Um, Black Friday shopping, this is a Soulwood story, so I was hoping that 
the story where Nell and Jane meet would be in here, but I think that that's not technically an anthology. Um, but this one's Nell and Occam are in Walmart, and they meet a young witch that's from the um, church that Nell deals with in her book. And so that was fun. It's before, you know, there's big changes in Nell and Occam's story. Um, but it was, it was cute, you know, Black Friday shopping with people being horrible and trying to steal stuff from each other and, you know, trying to figure out the witch culprit. Um, but it was fun. Let's see. The next one is how Occam got his name. And that one was really nice. It talks some about when Occam was first found and gives you a little bit of a backstory and how he came up with his name. So, like I said, not like super essential to the timeline, but it was good to see. So, Shiloh and the Bricks. Shiloh is a witch turned vampire. And, of course, you know, she thinks she knows everything and Jane's trying to tell her like nah you've got to basically go to witch boot camp because you don't have control and so they set up some things to kind of show her that she's not in control and everybody's kind of like uh oh are we gonna stake her they didn't she got it together and she goes to witch camp but it's fun to kind of see the process there I don't like anything with the Everhart's there um Molly Everhart is Jane's best friend and so the Everharts are a group of really powerful witches that you don't want to get on their bad side. Um, but they're fun to kind of see, you know, the girls like snapping at each other and doing all this cool witchy stuff. Um, Beast Hunts Vampire with Jane. This one was just kind of a Christmas serial short. Just another fun one getting back into Jane and Beast's head. Because, um, you know, um, Beast is the best hunter. If you know, you know. Um, so Of Cats and Cards is in here and... <laughs> I enjoyed this one the most. I actually read it on the website when it first came out and this it was lengthened and extended a bit. And so basically to get Edmund, he's one of the vampires, help, Jane promises that Beast can hunt um, from Edmund's car. He's got a nice, I think it's a Maserati convertible, so she wants top down to be able to spring out of the car and hunt the animals. And Edmund's like, um, oh hell no, not in my car, right? Um, so he has to navigate, he has to negotiate with Beast. He doesn't get to negotiate with Jane. He has to negotiate for Beast, who has decided that she's hunting in Ed's car. Um, so they do come to a compromise. Look, here's my own Beast. Isn't he the best key boot? Anyway, so they do negotiate. They get to go to this ranch on Texas, but it's fun. You get to hear some of Edmund's point of view and how he really appreciates kind of getting to let go and dealing with the irritation of Beast because, you know, he's a vampire with heightened senses and so Beast is rubbing on him to give the cat scent and putting hair on his expensive clothes, which, you know, he's like, stupid cat, but he likes the cat. The cat loves Edmund um, and they have a really good time hunting the Beast and talks about, you know, her being able to go for the kill and, but also, you know, we're not mindless. We're not just killing stuff just to kill it. We need to be able to eat it and making some of those arrangements and stuff. But um, just kind of the play of Edmund and Beast getting a jump out of the <laughs> out of the car. Um, best story in here ever. Uh, and I reread that all again. I wasn't sure if I was going to read it and then it said extended. But I was just like, I'm going to read it again anyway because it was just so awesome. Um, but yes, Beast love it. Ed. So this one is, uh, the next one is Beast Hunts a Deer, and that was on Beast's fan page, and so just another, again, um, Beast's point of view, keeping stuff simple, the hunt, uh, she's awesome. The next one is Jane Tracks Down Ms. A, and this is one, it says that the part of the timeline is uncertain, and it's really just kind of where Jane could have killed somebody, and she decided not to and kind of seeing, dealing with age and vampirism and trying to be better. So again, not like super necessary to the timeline, um, but it was just a cute little short. This one was cool. Um, it was, Jane was tracking down, I believe, a vampire with G. And so G is a mythical type bird thing. And they decided that they had to go on a hunt together when they were um, partners in the vampire. I'm trying to not give spoilers for those of you that are still kind of 
in the um, middle of the story, but this is a separate hunt that they had agreed to go on, and Jane does a shapeshift that she's never done before, and they meet some other vampires up in Canada, and another creature that we never heard of, and so that one was really kind of fun and hard to take down. Um, the neck, and that one was a pretty decent size story. Uh, the other one's 1860, so there's two stories in here from Ayata's, um, and I don't know if I said that right, so apologies, from his point of view, um, back in, like, this one is 1860, and he crosses over between both Jane and Nell's story, but I don't really like him as a character. <laughs> These stories weren't bad, and I do wonder if, um, I had read these first if I might have liked him a little better, but I didn't really like how he answered the story and how he does some things. So, um, these weren't too bad, but they weren't my favorite. Uh, the next one from him is Wolves Howling in the Night. And so that actually talks about him with, um, one of the first ever heart witches and tracking down some people who weren't doing what they were supposed to do. So that one was fun. You know, for him, because I don't really like his character. Um, so the next one is The Death and the Fashionista, and that's some about um, Molly, Jane's best friend, dealing with her death magics. And that one was, um, she got to see a different facet to it, and so it was fun to kind of have her explore and see. Uh, the next one is My Dark Knight, and so this one has Edmund and baby Angie. So Angie's Molly's daughter, who is an uber powerful witch and it's told from Angie's point of view and how she kind of tries to solve this problem and how she can see and interact with magic on a different level that her parents can't like she could see the bindings of magic and so she took them off and put her parents to sleep so she could do what she wanted to do like every you know parents like oh my god like see this is why they bound your magic but it didn't take obviously um and Ed has a little appearance in here and that was fun to kind of see their bond and interactions and so that one was really really cute and that one was a decent sized chunk too you get a couple of the other ever hurt sisters in there also um bound into darkness that was one of the ones from dirty deeds and that was liz and um i'm blanking eli uh teaming up to take down uh an issue in there and that one wasn't too bad but i already read it and it's a decent size story so I just didn't reread it again and then um the ties that bind this one is one of the the Everhart mama so Molly's mom um over all the kids and one of the other um master vampires and it kind of in the books that it, it hints that they have a little bit of history and in here you get to see how they have a little bit more history like him bringing her food from the restaurant and so that was a pretty good read so uh just some kind of quick stories some of them um, give a little bit of depth and explanation to what we've had in the books. It is also a nice little nostalgic rewind to some of the different things that you see in the timelines of the books and getting to revisit with some of our favorite characters. So thoroughly enjoyed even the characters that I don't like as much. Um, and I hope you guys go pick it out and get it. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Talk to me about the book and other books that you guys are enjoying that I can go pick up. Alright, thanks. Bye.